Uh, when is touring coming back? I feel like there's always an update about about this, right? A conjecture that I make about when touring is coming back. And um, thought about it, thought about it. Uh, and, you know, previously I've been, I've been saying, oh, well, it'll come back early next year, right? Like, hopefully by the time that I normally am on the road, uh, things will be back to normal, you know, maybe a vaccine, maybe this thing will taper out, what have you. Um, and now we, we're talking about some vaccines, right? We're talking about uh, the possibility of uh, two or three vaccines. And um, we got Pfizer, which is like a 90%, uh, it's like a 90% efficient vaccine. Then we have something else with 94. I can't remember exactly the name of the company right now. A friend of mine was telling me about it. Um, Pfizer has not taken any sort of government grants or any of that sort of stuff, which means that they are looking to absolutely turn a profit from it because they are a pharmaceutical company, uh, and that's what they're going to do. Uh, this other company has taken government sub, uh, grants and loans and stuff like that, but... Uh, again, no real guarantee that they won't charge out the ass uh, because we live in a capitalist hellscape that doesn't really give a shit and looks for every opportunity to turn a profit and make endless, endless amounts of money because uh, capitalism in and of itself is a virus that can never be stopped. And I'm, I'm being a little facetious about that. It can be stopped. Uh, it's it's up to us to, to, to stop it, to you know, push back in any way that we possibly can. Um, but, uh, you know, let's say, let's say all things go well, the 94%, uh, approved vaccine, you know, by this company, let's say they go, yeah, we'll, we'll give it to everybody for free. We're, we're just going to, we're just going to get the fucking thing out there. Um, Let's say that does happen, and, and it happens by January. Well, they're going to have to come up with a way to mass produce this thing in order to get it to everybody. They're also going to have to come up with a system to ensure that people can um, go and get this vaccine, uh, you know, based on um, need, right? Like, like, who is the most... Who, who, who needs this vaccine the most? Uh, well, first and foremost, I think it's going to go to uh, a friend. And a friend of mine did bring this up, too, is it's going to go to the rich people. It's going to go to the movie industry. It's going to go through to to uh, uh, athletes. Right. To, to bring sports back, because that's the priority that that keeps the that keeps the distraction machine a rolling. Uh, that keeps people. um you know, not talking about the big important issues that keeps us distracted. It's a nice uh, escape, right? And I'm not saying that we shouldn't have sports and we shouldn't have movies. I myself enjoy a bevy of movies. I'm not a big sports guy, but, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big Marvel movies fan. I, I, I'm a big, uh, big nerd. So, you know, I do enjoy all those things. And there, and there is a place for those things. And even they aren't particularly 100% escapism because you can't do that, especially when you have uh, somebody creating any sort of art. You're going to have art that mirrors life. So on and so forth. Anyway, uh, but I think that's going to be the first place that this vaccine is going to go to, to revive this industry, to bring that back forward. Because we need, because again, capitalism needs people to go out there um, and, and spend a bunch of money. That's what it needs us to do, and that's what it's going to promote us to do. So, so that's going to be number one, and then number two will be, uh, you know, we we'll, we'll talk about the elderly, we'll talk about the immunocompromised, and then uh, and then it'll be general populist stuff, um, and they'll they'll come up with an organization for that. I've heard a couple different ones, like based on your last name and your zip code. Um, you know, you'll, you'll have a particular spot that's giving out these vaccines and, uh, based on your last name and your zip code, it will, it will prompt you to go to a spot to go get this vaccine or something along those lines. Uh, I don't know if that's the 
best system in place, uh, but it'll be a system in place. It'll 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 be something. Um, you know, but here, I'll get to the I guess the bigger part of this in in just a second here. Uh, but you know, so let's say let's say they come up with this mass distribution by March, right? So so April they deliver it to the rich folks. Uh, May immunocompromised in the elderly and June for general general public, and there's this big divide. What happens next? I think it's going to be a little too quick to say that things will open up at you know back to normal. Everything is going to go quote unquote back to normal, which I don't think we should be looking at going back to normal. I think we should go better than normal because normal was bullshit. Uh, normal was. Uh, this massive income gap, thousands, thousands of people uh, not having health care. Uh, people were having to work two to three jobs just to be able to feed their family. That's normal. That that's what we were living under. And then this pandemic hit and basically showed us how fucked capitalism is and how continuing to be in this system is just going to eat us alive. We should be looking at going to better than normal. Um, I don't think people will stop wearing masks right away. I think there will still be a, a point where, you know, maybe in July through July and August, people will still be wearing masks. We'll, we'll probably phase that out. But then comes the question of how long does this vaccine last? Because there were a lot of reports that, you know, the um, the antibodies against COVID-19 only lasts for about three months. So do we then have to restart every three months? So when the general public is getting their, their vaccine, you know, the athletes and, and the rich folks have to fucking re-up. So does that mean that the economy gets fully open again? Probably not. Not next year. I think next next year is still going to be a difficult year based on all of this. Um, and it's something I think we should be preparing for. So, you know, on my end, and, and this is just, this is a, a comedian talking about foresight, uh, something that politicians and world leaders and experts and think tanks should be doing, but they don't because they're part of the capitalistic system and the capitalistic system only looks at short-term gains. How can I get the most now? Not how can I make this thing sustain? They're not looking at sustainable sustainability on any ends, especially on an economic one. How do I get rich quick and stay rich longer? That's what they want to sustain. They just want to sustain their wealth. Um, everything else can go fuck itself in terms of sustainability. Anyway, for, for, for myself, I'm looking at it going, well, I doubt, I doubt that I'll be on the road before August of next year. Um... Maybe maybe even a little bit later. And most likely what I will end up doing is doing a short run of tours, uh, flushing out a new show, which I, you know, I have an idea of what I want the new show to be. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to call the tour The Citizen Revolution because I've been doing those as virtual shows. And if you've, you know, but that's neither here nor there. Um work that out and then figure out what I'm going to, and then I'll probably go open for Lee Camp a couple times as long as uh, how many other times he would like to have me open for him and be a part of those shows uh, but then once we start looking at the fall and winter again once we start looking at how many times do we have to take this vaccine in order to eradicate it from our society 
it's very much going to be dependent on, you know, how touring works just on me, just on a ground level comedian who, you know, is filling fucking 20 to 50 seats in cities. I'm not, I'm not even filling large amounts. Even, even someone like Lee Camp who fills, you know, upwards of 200 seats or Jimmy Dore who fills upwards of three or 400 seats or Graham Elwood and Ron Placone filling up like 150 seats on, on, on their own is, you know, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a trial and error basis but we don't have to so well basically what i'm saying is i'm i'm preparing myself for the first you know 8 to 9 months of next year being similar to this so setting myself up for success in terms of doing virtual shows maybe twice a month instead of three times a month because that seemed to be a little that seemed to be like a lot for me to do Especially when I was writing a new show every every week, um, but doing that, getting audio equipment, setting up my home studio, getting settled in, because you know I'm I, and and then after that, there's still no guarantee that uh, touring is going to be feasible for 2021 if the vaccine is a repetitive one, uh, and then what happens when we have to deal with uh, how, how do we how do we know that somebody got the vaccine? Do we have a way to track that? Do we have a way to denote that we did? Are we going to all have to wear armbands saying, hey, yeah, I got the COVID-19 vaccine. Oh, hey, I've I've re-upped my COVID-19 vaccine. How do we enforce something like that? Because you have these anti-maskers. You have these people that think that this thing is a hoax and not real. That damage has been done. And that damage is kind of difficult to undo in this regard. So, you know, how do you re-educate people to be like, hey, this is a big deal and you know, this vaccine is important. I mean, there's, you know, and then we have the whole anti-vax crowd that that we have to contend with. There are varying degrees of conspiracy theorists. Th- theorists. And I did do a video about, like, how to deal with anti-vaxxers or, or where the anti-vaxxer psychology comes from. Um, you know, and I think shunning those people will only... Um, well, I think we'll only make things worse. Uh, they have to be educated and they have to find a reason for this to be a reality. And and honestly, what what's going to happen is you're going to see a bunch of people within those three months start getting it. So the cases aren't going to go away, which means that we're going to have to keep getting people vaccinated. So again, you know, am I going to be back on the road in August is is. Are we going to see live events and things of that sort next August or, or next September? Maybe it, it's really going to depend on how how the 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 anti-mask anti-vax people deal with this and what's going to happen to them when there's when when there's a large percentage of the populace that is vaccinated, but within them there's a higher risk that they're going there's going to be community spread which is what we're seeing now. But how do you enforce it? Especially in a country like this that is so hell-bent on freedom over logic. It's not freedom with logic, right? Like, logic isn't a part of freedom. You don't have the freedom to be logical. Uh, In fact, more often than not, hype overwhelming logic... Overwhelming freedom means less logic. So how do you how do you do? I don't know. I don't I don't particularly have an answer to that uh, other than, you know, you got to wear a fucking wristband or you got to what do we put it on your fucking ID and people have to scan the ID to be like, OK, this guy got it, the fucking thing, you know, or, or this gal got her thing and. For fuck's sake, like, there's travel advisories in the state of Pennsylvania where they're saying that you have to be tested 48, 72 hours before you come in. 
you have to have your results as negative before you come into the state, but they have no way to enforce that. And then there's also the issue of there are certain places, certain cities where the state lines are too close. So like Kansas City, Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri, you know, people in Philadelphia work in New Jersey. People in Steubenville, Ohio work in Pennsylvania. People in parts of West Virginia work in Pennsylvania, vice versa. So how do you monitor something like that? How do you get, gain an exemption for something like that? And this is what I mean is you have to have foresight because it's not like they didn't know that the surge was coming. Due to lack of fucking planning. Joe Biden keeps talking about how he has a plan. Why didn't you put it out there? Why didn't you itemize some shit? You know who fucking did though? Fucking Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders itemized his plan. Put it out there of how to deal with this pandemic back in March. Old boy wasn't even running at that point. Just was like, this is I think what we should do. Anybody want to adopt these ideas and fucking make it happen? I'm here. Let's do, let's, let's do it. Joe Biden's like, I have a plan. Testing. Science. Yelling very loudly about Trump. Having a scowl on my face. And then saying something weird about black people. That's how you deal with the pandemic. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.